moving trig identities, okay? Um, so first of all, let's talk about those Pythagorean identities a little bit more in depth because I told you that what we did in those tables is not enough to prove that that is true. I want to show you how we can prove that it is true. Okay, we're going to keep this in um, general form. So what I've done is I've set up a right triangle in the first quadrant, okay, with the standard angle that's formed with the horizontal. The right angle is also formed with the horizontal. So if we were to try and label the sides of this triangle, we've got to do it in general terms. Based on our unit circle, what is the x coordinate on the unit circle? What does that give us? Cosine of the angle. So if we think about this being a point out here, then this horizontal side right here corresponds to the x coordinate or the cosine. The y coordinate or the vertical distance corresponds to the sine of our angle. And if we're on the unit circle, the hypotenuse is always 1. Okay? So that's where this... All right, so these are called the Pythagorean identities because it's based on the Pythagorean theorem. If we were to set up the Pythagorean theorem with this triangle right here, it's the leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Well, one of the legs is equal to sine of theta, the other leg is cosine of theta, and the hypotenuse is 1. Um, now, just as a convention in trig, when you square a trig function, we put the exponent between the trig function and the angle, okay? We put the exponent between the trig function and the angle because sine squared of theta is not equal to sine theta squared, okay? If you don't put any parentheses around that, it's understood that that exponent is on the theta, not on the trig function. Okay? Squaring the angle is different from squaring the trig function, because the trig function is the ratio, the theta is just the angle. Okay? Those are not equal, so make sure that you put your exponents between the trig function and the angle every single time. And you've got to make sure you have the angle there. Alright, uh, does that make sense so far? Okay, so um, there are actually nine different versions of the Pythagorean identity. Uh, we already know three of them. We have them on our paper, but let me show you how they come from this right here. Okay, so I have this written down three times. The first one I'm going to come back to in a minute. Um, but what I'm going to do the first time is, and this may seem a little weird, but I'm going to divide all my terms by sine squared of theta. Now, I can do that because I've done it every single term. My equation is completely balanced, okay? I have done nothing mathematically incorrect. Um, I'm just manipulating. So, what, what is something over itself equal to? 1. So, sine squared of theta over sine squared of theta is equal to 1. Cosine over sine is equal to what? cotangent, and as long as they are both squared, then that is equal to cotangent squared of theta. And 1 over sine is equal to cosecant, well it was sine squared, so that's cosecant squared. That's what you have on your paper there. 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. You already have that. Okay? What do you think I might do to get the other one? To get uh, tangent squared plus 1. If I divided that one by sine squared, what might I do to this one? Divide by cosine squared. I'm going to go through and I'm going to divide everything by cosine squared. From the original. Okay. Sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. And 1 over cosine squared is equal to secant squared. Now, sometimes I forget to mention this, but um, we're going to end up using these to substitute. Okay? Meaning, like, if I see tangent squared of theta plus 1 in my equation, I'm going to replace it with secant squared of theta. Um, it has to be squared. Okay? It has to be squared in order to be able to replace it. Tangent of theta plus 
one. I can't do anything with that uh, in regards to this. Okay. Um, now, I said there were nine versions. This is only three. Well, what happens is you can manipulate these equations just by moving things from side to side. So with my original, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, I can subtract sine squared from both sides and get cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared of theta. Okay, so there's version number 4. I could do the same thing by subtracting cosine squared. So I would get sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of theta. There's version number 5. I'm showing you where these come from, so you don't have to look at it as, well, I've got to memorize nine different versions of this equation. No, you really don't. If you got the first one and you know where the other ones come from, then you can just manipulate it. Okay? Uh, with the cotangent and cosecant one, Okay, if I subtracted the cotangent squared, I would get cosecant squared of theta minus cotangent squared of theta is equal to 1. Or if I subtracted the 1, I would get cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta minus 1. And I can do the same thing to this one. Subtract the tangent squared. or subtract the 1 and there are the 9 versions of the Pythagorean identities. Okay, and I also threw up here, it may have been helpful to put it before I did all this, but just reminders that tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine and cotangent is cosine over sine. So what we're going to do, this is where our examples are going to come from. And you're going to read through, and I'm also going to put them up on the board. We're going to actually prove some identities. Okay, we're going to prove some identities. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this before we move on? I was really tired. Alright, so let's look at number one there. Okay, let's look at number one there. I've got it up here on the board or you can look there on the sheet. Okay, but we're going to prove this trig identity. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that the cosine cubed of theta plus sine squared of theta times cosine of theta is equal to just plain old cosine of theta. So we're going to show that the left side of this equation is exactly the same thing as the right side of this equation. So here are a few ground rules for trig identities. you got to pick one side. Okay, This is an equation, but we're not solving it. Okay? We're not trying to solve this equation. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to show that, that one side equals the other side. So you've got to pick one side to work on, and you don't do anything else to the other side. Now, typically you pick the side that looks more complicated. So in this case, we would be manipulating the left side. There's not really anything you can do to manipulate just plain old cosine of theta. There's, I mean, it is just, I mean, you could write it as 1 over secant, but that's about it, okay? So the more complicated side is where we're going to start. Um, the first thing that I notice is that both these terms have cosine of theta in them. So I'm going to try factoring that out. They both have a cosine theta, so I'm going to factor that out. When I do, if I take a cosine out of cosine cubed, I'm left with cosine squared. And when I take cosine of the other term, I'm left with the sine squared. And I'm just going to bring that cosine theta on the right side. I'm just going to bring it down. I'm not allowed to do anything to it. I'm just going to bring it down. Now, whenever I see trig functions squared, I'm automatically thinking Pythagorean identities. So what is cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equal to? One. So I know it's a little redundant, and usually we wouldn't write this, but I do want you to write it right now. 
I do want you to write that left side as cosine of theta times 1. So that I can see that you didn't just cheat and say, well, but it's supposed to equal cosine, so I'm just going to say that it equals cosine. Okay? Um, I want to see that you understand that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And then your very last step should be that cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta. I know it looks very redundant and dumb, but that's the mathematically correct way to do it. Okay? Alright, so that's one technique. Sometimes you factor, okay, and you replace with the Pythagorean identity. Let's look at number four. Cosecant of theta over secant of theta is equal to cotangent of theta. The more complicated side to give the left side. Most of the time you're going to work on the left side. Every once in a while you'll, write, or you'll work on the right side. But usually it's the left side. Um, this time there's no factoring to be done or anything like that. But I'm looking at reciprocal identities. So another technique is that you want to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. Secant is equal to 1 over cosine. You've got to turn that into cotangent somehow. Well, what happens when we have a fraction divided by another fraction? The top one stays the same. We flip the bottom one over and it turns into multiplication. Well, we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and what is cosine over sine equal to? Cotangent. Number six, we've got cotangent of theta over cosecant squared of theta minus one. And we've got to show that that's equal to tangent of theta. Here's one of my red flags. I have a trig function squared plus or minus one. I should be thinking trig identity. It is, okay. Cosecant squared minus 1 is equal to cotangent squared. So we've got cotangent of theta over cotangent squared of theta. Now, how does that left side simplify? cotangent over cotangent squared. It's kind of like x over x squared. Yeah, cotangent, where is it? On the bottom. 1 over cotangent. Well, that's not tangent, but cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So 1 over cotangent is equal to the tangent. Simple enough, right? 